question one, if a guy is taking exogenous testosterone, and let's just say he's been on it now for a few months, is he able to create sperm? Not 95% chance he's not. Wow. While he's on it. Yep. Understood. But can he create it once he stops? And we'll, and yeah. we'll definitely address that. But just to be clear, even a couple of months on exogenous testosterone in any form, injection, topical, oral, whatever, you basically have shut off the ability to make sperm because your testes themselves have shut down. Right. No signals. Yep. Right? Okay. No gas to the engine. Now there's some, ex it's nuanced. Okay. So there's, there are formulations that are topical that are less potent that way, less inhibitory than injectables. So there are variations in the spectrum of exogenous testosterone that will maintain some of your fertility. There are formulations. At least the, um, I don't want to go so far as to call it the marketing material, but for lack of a better term, the marketing material is suggestive that the more frequently delivered variants, so for example, the intranasal variant, which is delivered three times a day, the oral variant delivered twice a day, have less of a negative impact because they're producing far lower surges Correct. than if you did a weekly injection. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah. So they do more physiologic. Yep. They're in the r normal range more. What gives you side effects from testosterone, including sterility, is the spike. too much. Yeah. So in your experience, has that borne out? Yeah. So men, you've seen men taking Natesto three times a day, doing a nasal- Keeping uh, their sperm counts. Keeping yeah. their sperm counts. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's interesting to note. What about the oral testosterone, the twice a day? Love it. So in in testosterone, I can and decanoate, and it was not available in America for 50 years. It was available in Europe, and a couple of researchers at UCLA, a husband-wife team, beautiful, um, decided what happened was we were worried when we took oral testosterone yeah, we go to the liver, go right to the yeah. biliary system and go to the liver, cause liver cancer, so it was always verboten. All right, so now let's talk about the guy who comes to see you. He's been on exogenous testosterone for three years. So he was given poor advice three years ago. He went to some shady, you sure. know, back alley website and they just, you know, he was 27 years old at the time. He just wanted to, I mean, this is tragically a very common story by the yeah, way, right? Is. So this guy's been on 200 milligrams of testosterone a week for the past three years. He's now 30 years old. He's met the love of his life and lo and behold, they can't seem to get pregnant. So he's in your office. During the history, you find out pretty quickly he's been on 200 milligrams of testosterone for three years. Tell me what his uh, sperm analysis looks like. Do you see there are no, there, presumably there are no sperm. I would bet 95% confidence that he would be no, have no sperm in his semen. Okay. At so 200 you, milligrams a week. So what are you telling him now? How are you going to solve this problem? So it's funny because a lot of guys come in um, they're, they look good. And, uh, and I, when I examine, I'll say, are you taking anything? Are you taking, because they never put it on their medications, right? You never write it out on the history. You always have to get it out of it. And if they look- If they're super jacked, but then they have shriveled testes. Yeah, and they're zero. And, yeah. they're, and they're wondering, what, 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 you know, right? So <laughs> I will look them in the eye and say, are you taking testosterone? And I'll look them in the eye until they answer. And if they look down and, and they don't say anything, I know they're on it. If they look me in the eye and say no, then I know they're not, but they'll always look away because it's, it's this verboten thing. So. This is the same, by the way, as I'm sure you experienced as a resident in the ER, the people that come in with foreign rectal bodies and abdominal <laughs> pain, that's the one thing they emit from their history, right? It's like, they tell you, you know, this is the last time I ate, this is this, this is this, but then you get the x-ray back and there's like a candlestick <laughs> in their colon <laughs> And then you say, what this about is this? Your Hopkins what about this can Baltimore. Yeah, yeah. What about this candlestick? And they're like, oh, yeah, I totally <laughs> forgot to mention that. Yes, yes. That's... It was lit when I went in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, typically I'll say, so my theories about this is if he's, why is he taking it? So if he's taking it for anabolics and, yep. you know, he probably has a pretty good idea. And I, I want to send you, give you a little research we're doing on the lifespan of anabolic steroid users. So remind me to, at the end of the story to, to give you a little brief about what, what I know about that. But um, so I so when you take so how he takes it matters. Yep. So if he's been in constant use injectables, yep. that's the most suppressive of fertility. And if you turn a gland 
like a testicle off long enough, it's off. So I gave a lecture to the Endocrine Society on recovering men from hypogonadism in young men. And I asked them a question at the end because I, this, I, my whole procedure comes from steroid users. I, I, I take notes when the anabolic guys come see me because they're really smart and they know a lot about reactions, biology. Yeah, it's not, incredible. But not everything. Yeah, but yeah. it's a science. Some of them are PhDs. I took notes for years and then it came up my approach. Uh, along with what I know, right? So it's very much in concert with concert with them. So everything I say is sort of built on ex a large experience uh, and it's called Getting Off the Juice, the blog. And I have people read that blog, do it and say, get about 80% of the way and then call me and say, you know, I need help here, now I'm here. Yeah, we'll, like, we'll link to this in the show notes. It's pretty for sure. cool, Getting Off the Juice. And there's a PowerPoint in it. So the recovery, it's usually possible in young men, but it depends on how much they took, how long they took it, and how they took it. If they do it like a cycling effort, that's the best, right? So if you cycle steroids, you recover the pituitary, you get back to normal, and then you hit it again, that's actually quite smart. Constant use is not. Constant use for longevity or whatever is not a good idea for fertility. So that's going to be much more suppressive. Injections are worse than orals or any gels. Mm-hmm. So the next thing is how long, so I asked the Endocrine Society, since I answered all their questions, I said, I have a question for you. Can you turn a testicle off like in a thyroid or an adrenal gland? If you suppress it enough, can you turn it off for good? And they said, yeah, that's a board question of ours. We can do that. And I said, because we believe it's always reversible in the field of infertility in men. And, they, and so that got me a little worried. And so now I kind of worry about five to 10 years of use. After five or 10 years of use, you may not get it back, either the ability to make sperm or the ability to make testosterone native. So we typically tell men in our practice, um, don't, you know, two years would be the absolute ceiling. Maybe, are we too conservative? Maybe. Okay. Depends on dosing and everything, right? Yeah. If they're doing 250 a week, then No, I mean, in our practice, it would be 50 it twice a, while. a week. Yeah, okay. I did a study, published a study when I was a fellow in, in Houston um, of a guy who took it for 25 years and we drove at him with gonadotropins, that's HCG and FSH, and we didn't get anything, but he had testicular. No, we got a, a, a low number of sperm back, and I just had a guy from Louisiana come in, 25 years of chronic use. I did a mapping procedure to find sperm in his testicle, and, and he's gonna be having a kid, but he made a couple of sperm. After, and that was the record for you, me. But you pump him full of HCG and synthetic for a FSH. Year and get nothing. And then you have to look in the testicle because yep. production can be low enough to be there, but not coming up. But this is the rescue protocol. It's LHFSH. Basically, there's three ways to do it. One is never stop the testosterone suddenly. Hmm, interesting. Because men will hit the doldrums and go boom, and they'll flop over like they have the flu. They'll feel like shit and they'll get right back on it. They'll yep. feel terrible because they have nothing going on. If you take the testosterone away, their system's turned off, they're not making their own. It takes time to get the system to reactivate. So that's the hardest. So I always taper testosterone over- Over what period of time? Six weeks, typically. You have the dose for two, have the dose for two, and then off for two, and then you measure. And that's like getting out of the white water into the green, the green wall a little bit. So that's a little smoother, mm -hmm. so taper. And then I offer them two options. One option is taper alone, taper with clomid or enclomiphene, which is a little quicker getting the pituitary to turn back on. So that will that will soften the blow of the feeling of feeling completely fatigued or more aggressively HCG and, and, and Clomid. Okay. Um, That's and interesting. I, I guess there's no- At about six weeks or- And either. there's no, so it's, it's, it's interesting. If you give Clomid, the pituitary will make FSH and LH? Yeah. It that takes doesn't a while. shut off. It takes a while. Well, that's a way more cost-effective approach than giving, because synthetic FSH is pricey. Yes, a couple thousand a month yeah. in America, yeah. So is there any reason to do that over the Clomid approach, or is it just that it's faster? I think you might gain a couple of weeks of time. Okay. So for most people, that's not right. so a price worth paying. So with that taper over a month or two, I usually check their T-levels at around two weeks off of the last testosterone, and that's the lowest they'll be. Mm -hmm. And if they're in a good range there, that didn't you, you can use that as a predictor of their response. If what would not, be good? If they're in a normal range. Oh, really? Okay. So you, you, we, we want within a couple months to see them back to 600. 300 would be okay. Okay. To make be, sperm. Okay. All right. But then to get them to where they want to be depends on their symptoms and what they're happy with. I'm, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not, you, you won't know until you wait longer. 
to see how how high you can get them. That's the lowest they'll be, but they'll yep. be off of testosterone. And if they go along that taper and they're not tolerating, I try to tell them, don't go back, just stay there because time will help you. Yep. And it, you're not gonna feel maybe that great, but try to do this because if you don't, if you go back, then we have to start over. But if you can just maintain it for a while, you'll feel better. And some of them dip a little bit, but remarkably, most men do really well with that taper. I'm Peter Atia. This podcast relies exclusively on premium subscribers for support, which allows us to provide all our content without taking a single penny from advertisers. I believe this keeps my content honest, making it a trusted resource for listeners like you. As a premium member, you'll get immediate access to our entire back catalog of AMA episodes and all future AMA episodes. You'll get longevity-focused premium articles packed with actionable insights, You'll get unrivaled show notes for each and every episode of The Drive, every topic, every study, every resource from each episode carefully curated for you. You'll get quarterly podcast summaries where you'll learn my biggest personal takeaways from the previous 90 days of expert guest episodes and much more. This journey doesn't have to be navigated alone. We can take these steps towards a better, longer life together. Become a premium member today at peteratiamd.com forward slash subscribe to join me in a shared commitment to a healthier future.